The Seagram building was completed in 1958 under architects Ludwig Mies van der Rohe and Philip Johnson. It has 38 stories, making it 515 feet tall. Mies' main concept for the building was to combine function with aesthetics. The Seagram building is an iconic piece of corporate modernism. It was built to be the headquarters of the Canadian distiller Seagram Liquor Company. The structure consists of steel, reinforced concrete, a steel moment frame, and an integral reinforced concrete core, and bronze tone I-beams that create the repetitive and minimal facade. The interior layout is open and airy. Internal materials are of high quality consisting of travertine, marble, and non-structural glass. On the entry level, the large plaza sets the entrance back 100 feet from the street, which creates a smooth transition from public to private space, attempting to eliminate the definition between interior and exterior space. The use of glass panels allows for an abundant amount of natural light to enter and flexible floor space. The Chrysler Building is a modernist skyscraper and landmark in Manhattan, New York, which was constructed between 1928 and 1930. It was for a short time the world's tallest building before the Empire State Building surpassed it in 1931. It is currently still the world's tallest brick building on the planet. Spanning from 1930 until the mid-1950s, the building was occupied and used by the Chrysler Corporation as its headquarters. The architect, William Van Allen, sought out to represent the Chrysler Corporation and its automobiles it produced by designing this building as an Art Deco style structure through the use of large ornamentation throughout. This can be seen by the choice of material for the crown and interior as well. The structure of the Chrysler building is made of steel and brick construction as the load bearing and primary structure as well as stainless steel cladding for the crown on the highest levels as secondary structure. The building demonstrates its ability to gain attention and be recognized as a modern corporate office building from such use of ornamentation. In the mid 20th century, structure became a formal organizational tool in buildings. A common aspect of high rise office buildings is repetition. However, and to differentiate between public and private areas, both the Seagram and Chrysler break the repetition with different styled entry level facades for their public areas. The Chrysler building uses different materials, particularly granite, to show which areas are open to the public on the exterior. It also employs large glass windows to engage transparency, whereas the office space above has smaller windows, all finished with white brick, which gives a greater sense of mass. The Seagram building uses a very similar tactic, but with more uniform and consistent materials. Large raised openings with glass to suggest that the space is public, which becomes especially apparent when compared to the uniform facade above. The building is also recessed with a large plaza containing two fountains, which further suggests public space. This was an important concept during the construction to have privately owned public space. The manipulation of structure materials is key in each of these buildings to serve their individual purposes. The way structure and ornamentation are manip manipulated coincides with Lewis Sullivan's argument pertaining to the modern office building and the separation and differentiation of its parts. Adolf Lue's ideology that ornament is a crime is quite relevant with the different means of decoration in these two buildings. The Seagram building follows his ideology with no real ornamentation. The details Mies incorporates are indicative of the structure, such as the mullion-like I-beams to create the facade. They offer lateral support as well, making them an integral part of the structure. The choice of rare and luxury materials used in the rawest forms creates a minimalistic yet sophisticated and rich experience. The solid travertine walls demonstrate how he does not require any true ornamentation to craft his design. The Chrysler building uses rare and beautiful materials on the interior as well, but in a way that they craft very particular moments and shape details in a true ornamental way, especially the elevators and lobby floors, walls, and ceilings. The building was designed to be a representation of the Chrysler Corporation, so it is indicative of an Art Deco style with lots of fleshy character and intricate patterns. The crown on top of the building acts as a giant ornament. The Chrysler hood ornament is also perched on several corners of the building. The Seagram Building's structural elements act to suppress the need for a formal decoration, which is indicative of Mies' less is more ideology. Whereas the Chrysler building, intended to be a flashy, eye-catching structure to engage in marketing tactics, employs a contrasting style of more literal ornamentation. 
Ornamentation and structure can work together harmoniously in order to pull a building together. They can be manipulated to convey different arrays of ideas and concepts. Nonetheless, they are equally important fixations in modern design and active elements of architecture that we continue to build on and improve.